I just got done watching Disney Plus's new original film, The Secret Society of Second Born Royals. And there's a lot to talk about here, so let's just jump right into it. Secret Society of Second Born Royals is about, you guessed it, a bunch of second born royals who become part of this, you guessed it, secret society as any second child in a, in a royal family is blessed with superpowers. At least I think it's all of them. They never actually make that clear. So yeah, this is a Disney Plus original. Um, I, I didn't really have much to uh, watch in the upcoming weeks, so I decided, ah, I've got, this is a, a new Disney Plus movie. Sure, why not? And I remember seeing some very small trailers for it. I never saw a full trailer, but I saw some, like, small clips of a trailer, like, part of a trailer on Instagram. I'm like, okay, this sounds okay. So I was actually semi-looking forward to this, I guess. But I, I didn't think it was going to be very good. I thought it was going to be a, um, just another bland, generic film. Kind of like Magic Camp. Magic Camp I didn't, I didn't hate. I thought that was okay. But I thought it was going to be in the same category as that and maybe a little worse. Um, but yeah, this movie sucks. <laughs> this was horrible. Oh my god, there! this is so bad. Alright, so I'm, I'm gonna jump right into it. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, I, I, I guess I'll start with the characters. The characters, for what they are, are okay, but the problem is they're the exact same cliche stereotypes you've seen in the past. Especially when it comes to the main lead. The main lead, Sam, is this rebellious teenage girl who doesn't follow the rules and go does these protest shit. And it, you know exactly where all of that's going to lead. And all the other characters have the exact same problem. You know exactly... The second you see where they're starting, you know exactly where they're going to end up. And so, some characters don't even get development in this. Like their teacher, James. He doesn't get any development. He he has no he he's just there as he's just there as the trainer. He has, he has no character outside of that. Oh, except I forgot he's allerg allergic to gluten, which that played a part in the story. It's just used as a joke that comes up once later. What was the point? Ugh. Whatever. And um, oh, the one thing I will say, um, Sam's mother is played by Electra from the Daredevil TV show. That is awesome. Um, though, though that, that's something that brings up a point that I remembered, is that it's the accents, because it's like every female character, other than Sam, has a British accent. Every single one of them, except for Sam. And you want to know how many male characters have a British accent in this? Zero. Not a single damn one. What the hell is this? I, I, I would understand it if, it if there was like a pattern like, okay, this person clearly has an accent, and these people don't, but Sam's mother and sister have an accent, but she doesn't, and she's the only female character who doesn't. Why? Why do none of the male characters have any accents? Was it just the casting, or was this the shitty direction? I don't know, but honestly, I don't care. I've got a lot more shit to complain about, so I'm moving on. Um, the, the story is by the book. It's paint by numbers. The script is the exact same thing you'd expect from this. This feels like a Disney Channel original movie. And I'll get into that later when I talk about the production. Uh, the, the story the story's predictable. There are two twists involving the villains. I want to say, there are villains in this movie because it's a superhero movie. There are two villains in this. And both and there is a twist revealing who they are. First one is predictable. Because they, they talk about these couple characters and it's like, okay, it's either that person or that person. And it's one of them. And the second one is the dumbest fucking twist I have ever seen in my entire life. There is no indication that this character is evil, and her betrayal comes right the hell out of nowhere. It's like Hans from Frozen, though this one might have been even more offensive. I, I, I hated Frozen, so I, I thought that movie was going to be slightly smarter than that. I was hoping this movie would be smarter than that, but there's nothing smart about this movie. It's by the bulk, paint by number, whatever, you term, whatever term you want to use, it's that. And, you know, with that said, I might as well get into the production, like I said. This is one of the worst made movies I've seen this year. The direction is sloppy, the editing is a mess, this... It, the And the effects are some of the worst I have ever seen. This CGI is unforgivably bad. This, this is the... This is, I, I may have complained about the... I know I complained about the CGI in Artemis Fowl. 
I know I complained about this about the CGI looking fake. This is bottom of the barrel CGI. This looks like I did them. I don't use effects on this channel, but I do have an app that can make effects. Those would probably look more realistic than the special effects in this. This looks like shit. Tron from 1982 looked more realistic than this. And, yeah, there's a total of three action sequences, and, it's, and all of them suck. The first one is a training session, their first ever training session, and honestly, this one's probably the least worst of the three, because it's at least okayly choreographed. Because it, it's a training simulation where they have to get a where they have to, this isn't a spoiler who gives a shit. There's there's a pyramid where they and they have to run through the simulation. You if you guys watch the Clone Wars, and you know the cadets training that they had to go through the clone cadets training, similar concept where they have they have turrets of lasers or fake lasers obviously, and they have a bunch of like obstacles they have to get around in order to get the pyramid. So simple, right? There are multiple problems with this. First thing. I clearly saw the turrets being rendered, so I don't know why that dumbass didn't see them the first time. The black guy, Tuma, just walks out there and immediately gets shot by the turrets. I'm, I'm thinking, how did you not see that? I saw it while the entire thing was rendering. And all of them get, first one, all of them get knocked out. All of them. And it's pretty pathetic. It is extremely pathetic how they get knocked out. And the second one involves this inmate, it was it inmate 34, or it was like 384 or something, I don't know, and the, he's the main villain of the movie. The, this isn't a spoiler, because this isn't the twist of who it is, because there is a twist involving who he is, but I'm not going to say that here, though I might as well, and I don't think you're actually going to watch this movie. <laughs> but there's an action sequence in the woods, or and in the school. Or it's, it starts out in the school, then it heads out to the woods. And this... Last in the school, it lasts all of 15 seconds. And it's really dumb, just involves the kids getting their asses kicked. Then it goes to the woods, where Sam gets pinned under a tree. And James goes after him. James's power is that he can make a bunch of him. You remember that one guy from X-Men 3, where he can make, like, a bunch of clones of himself? Similar, con same concept. And, like, 20 of them go after, go after this inmate. And they all get their asses kicked. And they do bring up this one thing that if he knocks out the real James, which knocks out all the other clones. And I'll give it credit, that does make sense, It how that would probably work, so I will give it credit on not being that stupid. But then the inmate goes out like a bitch in that scene, and we don't see him again until, like, and then we see him again later being captured, and it's one of the most pathetic things, and it's one of the most pathetic fights I've ever seen but not more pathetic than the final battle. I can't even call this a battle. The shitty CGI, the god-awful camera work, the edit, the bad editing, and just the, the lack of an actual fight. The one villain is knocked out by her, by her, her friend, Mike, and he doesn't have any powers, by the way. He's just, like, standing on top of the roof of a barn and just, like, drops a bag of something on her. Something heavy. He drops something heavy on top of her and knocks her, and knocks this villain out. And then they go after the inmate who's trying to crash her sister's coronation, who's becoming queen. I know what a coronation is. And it's one of the most pathetic fights I've ever seen in my entire life. It literally involves the four of them, or the five of them, I guess, with Mike, getting this thing called... It was it nanotech, I think? And no, it does not do what it does in Avengers Infinity War. In fact, what it does is pretty pathetic. Um, and I, either way, they're, they, they get the thing from him. The, the, the five of them work together to get it away from him. All kind of like, they're, all using, they're all utilizing their powers here to actually get him. Except for Tuma, be, for reasons that I won't say. But, though, though it did lead to one joke, because... Um, because he doesn't have his pa his powers aren't working there his powers aren't working for reasons I won't say but once you start watching the movie you'll probably figure it out but he, he, tr he his power is that he can basically make people do whatever he wants and he tells him and he tells him to drop the you know take he says he says you're not strong enough to stop me he's like I know but I made you look didn't I that was actually funny this movie does have some funny lines to it. It, it got maybe, like, four or five chuckles out of me, but nothing, like, 
no, like, big laughs out of me. There was nothing that was, like, hilariously funny. It was just some kind of, <laughs> like that. Getting back to the final battle, pretty much the entire final battle is him, is Sam running away with the nano thing, and the inmate, tell he's, his power's telekinesis, and he's just throwing, like, bricks from the building at her, and I, I can't, and it's one of the most laughable things I've ever seen, because she's not even running that fast. I don't know how he keeps it. It's not like she's actually avoiding anything. She's running and maybe going like seven miles an hour. I don't know. She's wearing a dress and boots, which is not proper running, which is not proper for running. And he should easily be hitting her, but that's not even the problem. The way it's shot is so bad. It's shot poorly. It's the editing is all over the place. The crappy CGI. It's not even a fight. And then the way they take him out is. Half clever and half dumb as shit. Because they, they, they I'm not going to say how they beat him, but it, on the one hand, it is kind of clever that they bring this back up. Like, like they were, they, they got the stuff from the society down and they brought it up to use it against him. I'm like, okay. But on the other hand, it's one of the most pathetic losses of a villain I've ever seen in my life. It's... It's, it's just a mess. This movie's a mess. It's so bad. Uh, I'm trying to think, is there anything else to talk about? The score's forgettable. As much as I bashed on Artemis Fowl, I thought the score was okay. Uh, the, the music was probably the highlight of that film. The score in this film's forgettable. There is a... I remember Sam and Mike... Like, you know how I said that Sam does, uh, like, uh, protesting and stuff? They're protesting the monarchy. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen that stuff like that before. And her friend Mike, like, are in a band, it's just the two of them, and they have a song at the beginning, and it's really bad, it's re it's a real bad song, most of the songs they have play in this background of this movie are really bad, and I, I, I just, I just can't, this is a very bad film. Uh, it's definitely not the worst I've seen, it's not even the worst Disney film of the year, I think Artemis Fowl and Mulan were worse, but somehow this movie managed to beat one and only Ivan for third worst Disney film of the year. Disney has not been impressive this year. Absolutely not. Their best achievement so far has been Phineas and Ferb. Phineas and Ferb. I really like Phineas and Ferb, but when you say that's the best Disney movie of the year, Disney is a step up their damn game. <laughs> and Black Widow's getting pushed back, so that automatically takes that out of the running. Uh, Soul better be good. Soul, Soul better be a freaking masterpiece, more I, th more I think about it. Soul better be a flippin' masterpiece. Like I said, with Netflix, after they made Cuties, I said they better... Devil all the time, and Neil Nolan Holmes better be freaking masterpieces. They weren't masterpieces, but they were good enough. They were good enough that I forgave Netflix for that. Ugh. Almost. Almost. I will say Netflix stepped up their game with Devil all the time and Neil Nolan Holmes. Disney has not stepped up their game. I, I think I said during, our, during my review of Mulan that Disney needs to step up their game. Because when... You, when one of Disney's better films of the year is Magic Camp. I start to see a problem. So, yeah. This movie is the equivalent of a bad Disney Channel original movie. I would say this feels like a... I would just normally say it feels like a Disney Channel original, but that's even to disgrace to some of the better Disney Channel originals, like High School Musical or, or Teen Beach Movie or Wizards of Waverly Place. It's a disgrace to those films because... It feels like it would be on par with those. It feels like it's on par with the third Descendants film. And the third Descendants film was trash. This one is probably just as bad as Descendants 3. And as I think about scoring this, I realize I might have given Mulan and Artemis Fowl way too high of a score. I gave them both a D plus, And I feel like that was way too high. I'm realizing more and more that those movies suck beyond all belief. Because... Secret Society of Secondborn Royals is better, but I can't, but I can't give them, I can't give it a higher score. I can't give it a, I can't give it higher than the two of them. So, yeah, so this is throwing this thing kind of out of whack. So, when it comes to the worst films of the year, this will probably be on that, unless the upcoming films I'm going to watch really suck. This might end up on the worst, but if you see it above Mulan and Artemis Fowl, don't be surprised, even though this has a lower score. So, with all that said... Don't watch this film. It's terrible. Even if you have it, especially if you have, and if you have a Disney Plus subscription, which is the only way you can watch it, it's free. Unlike Mulan, I was still tempted to ask for a refund. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to give the Secret Society of Secondborn Royals a D. Wow, this was bad. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for more reviews. And th my next video is going to be a new uh, starting a new segment on here. So be sure to look out for that because I don't have anything new to review for either like Monday or Tuesday or something. I don't have anything new until... Jeez, I think my next film, I think the next new film I'm going to watch comes out in, Octo like, mid-October, which is Love and Monsters, which is going straight to DV, which is going straight to video. So, that'll probably be the next one, and that's August, October 16th. So, the next few weeks, I'm going to be, star I'm starting new segments, I'm going to be posting, I'm going to be posting more frequently. I'm going to be filming more videos, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be posting a lot more, so be sure to look out for those. Uh, my throat is, my throat is sore, so I'm going to, Oh, every time I get one of these, ang I go on one of these angry rants for like 15 minutes. I've currently been filming for about, for over, for almost 20 minutes. And this is my second time recording this again. I'm getting really sick of having to record these reviews more than once. Thankfully, this time I only got like halfway through before my camera died. So, yeah, thank you. Like I said, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and yeah, I'll see you all next time.